How's it going, everybody? Estas here. So we had a pretty epic bounce back day in the stock market today. We had the S&P up 1.3%. We had the Dow up 0.7%. We had the NASDAQ 100 up a whopping 2.3% as the Russell lost about 0.2% on the day. So today, you guys know the deal. We're going to break down the markets, stocks, charts, my thoughts on the markets, plus more. So sit back, relax, hit the like button, subscribe, check out my Patreon, and make sure to get your your 50 free bucks from M1 Finance. Both of those are linked down below. And with that being said, let's get right into the video. So you guys know how today went for the most part. Or maybe you don't. I'm going to tell you what happened either way, guys. Today in the pre-market, we got a nice gap up, right? We had consolidation in the pre-market after the gap up. And then once the market opened at about 9.30, well, exactly at 9.30 a.m. on the East Coast, we had another huge run. So we had the pre-market gap up followed by consolidation in pre-market. And then the market opened and the markets went ballistic, right? And you guys can see at about 1 p.m., on the East Coast, that is where the rally started to cool off a bit. We hit 466.50 when it comes to SPY, and we close at about 464.60. So we lost about $2 roughly per share from 1 p.m. on the East Coast to when the markets closed at 4 p.m. And that kind of goes hand in hand with what we talked about in my video from earlier today, which you guys definitely have to check that one out after you watch this one. We talked about about in that video how today's rally it's not for sure but it might be a bull trap right because we can see here on the 20-day chart we rallied right up and past the 50 moving average but we rallied right up to the 180 moving average right and we're actually seeing sellers stepping in there that's where we started to fade from 1 p.m to about 4 p.m today on East Coast time, right, when it comes to SPY. So for me, I want to see SPY break 468, point blank period. That's why I have an alert at 468. That would put it right above the 180 SMA. If we break out of that point on this 20-day chart, that would convince me further that this is not a bull trap. In fact, we'd be breaking out at that point. But if we fail here at 468, Maybe we see a leg down tomorrow, the next day. We start going for the lows from Friday. That means today's rally was nothing but a bull trap. And when it comes to Triple Q, let's pop it up. Triple Q is a bit different, right? Uh, well, it's the same in the sense that we had a pre-market gap up, followed by a consolidation pre-market, and then once the market's open, we went ballistic, right? That's the same thing that happened uh, to SPY. But what's a bit different is this closed above the 180 moving average on this 20-day chart, whereas SPY didn't. It closed under that. So this is more bullish, in my opinion, than SPY. And the fact that we're actually breaking above the highs from last week or one of the highs from last week being about 399.50 we closed above that point and now after hours we're above 400 the fact that we're moving in that direction above 400 that's a very good sign and we had big tech do pretty well today amazon crushed it we had apple do very well google did well so a lot of these stocks are doing well and we will talk about some of them in this video. So what do you think, guys? Do you think this is a bull trap? Do you think the rally is legitimate? I'm not going to lie. Triple Q's chart looks pretty good, but I'd love to know your thoughts down below in the comments. Make sure to hit the like button if you haven't done so already. And with that being said, yep, let's get into the meat and potatoes, guys. Let's talk about some stocks that I'm looking at right now in real time. Number one is is Nike, ticker symbol NKE. And as the markets in general bounce back today, Nike did the same, right? It went up 1.1%, up almost two bucks per share. We closed a hair under 170 per share. And we closed right under a critical point of resistance here on the 20-day chart. You guys can see Nike closed under the 180 SMA. It had resistance or it saw resistance there all day. And that's at about 171. So first and foremost, before I even consider taking the Nike trade here, 
we're going to have to break above 171 and honestly above 171.50. So I'm going to put my alert at 171.50. And what we're noticing here on the 20-day chart is an ascending triangle. We have clear resistance at 178 to 180. We hit there back in early November. Also about a week ago, well exactly a week ago on the 22nd of November. So clear resistance at about 180. And we've been up trending into that resistance, right? Making higher lows ever since the beginning of October. So there's only one spot between us and filling that gap back to 180. And it's at 171.50, which again is that key resistance on the 20-day chart. So if we break that point, this will fill the gap, in my opinion, to 178, 180. And who knows, if the markets heat up again, we might get a leg up out of that point we might hit all-time highs and at that point if that happens the ascending triangle would be playing out so the next stock here is micro strategy ticker symbol mstr which i believe they actually purchased i was reading earlier they bought more bitcoin on this dip um, you guys can see it here micro strategy buys 414 million dollars worth of bitcoin which is a lot and that takes the total holdings to about 3.57 billion so they added a good chunk to their holdings and if i'm not mistaken i believe some of these bitcoins are on margin i'm not sure exactly how many or, or if that's even disclosed but they're they're using leverage from what i um from what i understand and let me know in the comments if i am wrong but we're not going to be talking about Bitcoin and the fundamentals of what they're doing over there at MicroStrategy. We're going to be focusing more on the chart. And let me tell you guys, the chart looks pretty dang good. We're seeing it's clearly holding an uptrend on the four hour here. We're within this uptrending channel. We're also noticing a bullish divergence on this four hour chart. Our size heating up, right? And I'm thinking. Yes, we're under the moving averages, which is a bit worrisome, but I'm going to set my alert at 730 right by the moving averages here on the four hour chart. And if we break that point, MicroStrategy could start gunning for the highs from where uh, where it was back earlier in November. And if you guys can see here, it was at about 890 to about 900 earlier in November, right? So this could end up breaking out, especially if Bitcoin starts heating up again. You guys remember it was at 69,000, which was an all-time high, and it pulled back to like 53, 54, something like that, which was a quick little 20%, maybe a little bit more of a drawdown. And now it's heating up again. Today, Bitcoin was at it was up like 8% last time I checked, higher 50,000s, 57, 58. Um, it could be higher now, who the heck knows. So if this heats up back to the 60, mid-60s, high 60s, I think MicroStrategy is going to break. And uh, that could be a nice trading opportunity for us. Mercado Libre, M-E-L-I, let's pop it up. Mercado Libre is very oversold here. It's gone straight down pretty much from 1970. That was early September. Now it just hit 1,200. And I actually, I don't want to say it went straight down because we did see some relief rallies in the middle of October heading into early November. You know, it went from 1,460 to about 1,700. But no joke, from 1,700 on the 9th of November, it's gone straight down to 1,200. No joke, it's lost $500 over the past couple of weeks per share, which is a drop of 30%. So at this point, we're getting very over oversold. Our size at 16, guys, on the four-hour chart, and the lower threshold begins at 30, the low-end threshold. So it's extremely oversold, right? And if I pull up this three-year chart, you guys can see we're clearly trading towards the bottom of the channel. Now, is this the bottom for sure, 1,200? Absolutely not. You know, the chart is not showing it bottoming out quite yet. But notice how last time we got this oversold back in May of 2021, we saw a nice rally from 1300 to 2000 per share. Now we're towards the bottom of the channel again. We took the low out from May of 2021 and we're at 1230. Who knows if we go to 1100, a thousand a share that that's possible. Um, 
Buyers might be stepping in around 1,000, 11, 1,200. So I'm going to be watching Mercado Libre very closely. I mean, it's down 40% from the all-time high. So I like this dip on it. Full disclosure, I don't own it yet. But if it sees another couple days like this, I will be getting in, guys, considering today it went down 2%. And again, over the month of November, throughout the month of November, it's down 30%. So keep your eyes out on Mercado Libre. Novavax is another one that I'm looking at, NVAX. This went down 11% today, so it didn't do well. It went down 24 bucks. That's pretty obvious look, uh, looking at this chart here. But another thing that's pretty obvious is that now we're trading towards the bottom of the channel. You guys can see we've pulled back to the 50 SMA on this four-hour chart at about 195, 200, and we're already seeing buyers stepping in. You guys see that green candlestick forming on this four-hour above the 50 SMA, and if I pull up the intraday chart, you guys can see the double bottom rally into the close. So this looks pretty decent. Mind you, though, there will be volatility. This stock is not for the people that don't want to take much risk. But if you do want to take a little bit of risk, you want to buy a breakout stock, which it is breaking out, guys. We're just simply pulling back within the breakout. I think Novavax could be a decent play. I mean, it's already trading above both moving averages. We're seeing a golden cross. It's just simply pulling back after being overbought. It's profit-taking, whatever the heck you want to call it. That is what we're seeing. And maybe is there a catalyst here? Nova Vax, Vax filing guidance unchanged. Spokesman says, anyway, the chart looks good. We're going to be monitoring it the next couple of weeks, next couple of days. QDEL is another one, ticker symbol QDEL. I don't know how to say this. QDEL, QDEL, whatever. This stock, the chart looks good. As I, as I was prepping this video, sifting through stocks, watch lists, you know, looking, looking out there on Yahoo Finance or on stocks that have been moving. This is one of them. And it went up 3.5% today, went up 5 bucks, And I really like what I'm seeing here. I'm seeing a clear-cut ascending triangle on the 4-hour. We've clearly been making higher lows since June, even back in April, May. We've started this uptrend reversal process. And we're noticing, even though we've been making those higher lows for months, We've been seeing resistance for months at 150 to 160. You can see that we failed in the end of July. We failed in the end of September. We failed multiple times throughout November so far at about 150. And we're still making higher lows. So we're digging ourselves deeper into the triangle where ultimately, if this plays out, we might see a huge breakout above 150, 160 for this thing to see a, a, another leg up. And if we pull up this three-year chart, you guys can see there's some room to run. I mean, if this thing breaks 160, 150, um, well, 155, 160, I'm going to put my alert at 155 right now. There's room to run. This once was a $300 stock back in July 2020, guys, and clearly it saw the pullback. We're holding the 180 SMA on this three-year chart, and we're slowly breaking the 50 SMA, but we're still not above one, uh, 155 160. But if we do get out of there, this could be a nice cut play um, back to $200 in my personal opinion. And as always, these are all my personal opinion, guys. Make sure to do your own research when you're watching my videos. As always, please, please, please do that. So the next stock is JP Morgan, ticker symbol JPM. I'm personally seeing a double bottom on this stock forming on the four-hour chart. Take a look at this. Even though we're not breaking out after the double bottom, it's still a double bottom nonetheless, right? Number one, we bottomed at about um, 160 on the 19th, and now we're at about 160 again for bottom number two, and we're also towards the bottom of this uptrending channel. So if we do see a nice breakout, maybe tomorrow, some point this week, <clears throat> Maybe we start to move on JP Morgan. And on top of that, I'm personally seeing a bullish divergence as well here on the four hour chart. So, yeah, we just got to watch it. Bank stocks in general are looking pretty interesting, right? JP Morgan is down 11 bucks from the all time high. Goldman Sachs is in the same predicament. It's in this uptrending channel. I'm seeing, you know, a bullish divergence on the four hour. It's down about 40 bucks from the all time highs. <clears throat> so, yeah, keep your eyes on the banks. And like I mentioned earlier in this video, big tech did well today. Google, Amazon, Tesla did well today. Uh, Apple did very well today. I think Meta or Facebook, whatever the heck 
you want to call it, did pretty well today. So these stocks are crushing it. And Google in particular went up 66 bucks, up 2.3%. And if you guys didn't know, Google is my favorite long time, uh, long time or long term. What am I trying to say here? Long term stock that I own in my portfolios. I own it across different accounts. And it did well for me today. Again, 2.3%. And I'm actually looking at it as a swing trade now as well. You guys can see we're trading about 115 bucks roughly off of the all-time highs. In other words, we're not really down much, but we're down about 3-4% from those all-time highs. And it seems like we're trading towards the bottom of the channel here. We're seeing buyers step in around the 180 SMA on the 4-hour chart. So I want to see if we end up filling the gap towards the top of the channel, whether it's all-time highs, previous all-time highs, new all-time highs. I'm watching Google, guys, and if you guys stuck till the end, make sure to drop me a comment because we're going to go over a, a bonus one here, which is IJR. I personally own IJR. It's a long-term position for me. It's a small cap ETF, and you guys, if you've been watching the small caps, let's pop up the Russell. They've been slaughtered recently. The Russells uh, went from 2450 now it's at 22.40. It's down 10%. It's in a correction territory, pretty much. And IJR is my only exposure to small caps at this point. Uh, broad exposure, shall I say. And it's pulled back to the 180 SMA on the 4-hour chart where buyers have stepped in <clears throat> over the past couple of months. So it's still kind of a falling knife. We're not seeing buyers run in quite yet to push it up. But since it's pulled back quite a bit, down about 7-8%. It's, uh, it's worth watching, in my opinion, not only as a potential entry for a long-term play, but maybe even a uh, swing trade as well if you guys like playing um, ETF stocks off of the moving averages. So that's pretty much it, guys. If you all enjoyed the video, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe, drop me a comment, and make sure to turn on notifications, guys, if you, uh, if you subscribe. Make sure to hit that bell next to the subscribe button. And I'm really mad about um, YouTube getting rid of the dislike button. I think it went through today, at least on my end. I know some some people, you know, have that feature removed earlier, some later. Uh, for me, it got removed today, which is kind of annoying. I mean, I, I hate, you know, seeing this happen, considering there's a lot of BS content out there, and people could see the dislike-to-like ratio right off the bat and be like, yep, I'm not watching this video. Uh, but now that they re uh, removed the dislike button... You pretty much can't do that. You know, you have to watch through the video. And if it wasted your time, since a lot of people disliked it, but you can't see the dislikes, you're pretty much screwed. You know, you wasted your time, um, which kind of sucks. But if you're looking at it from a business perspective, Google's probably like, let's remove this dislike button. So people watch videos that are meaningless, um, that are heavily disliked, but they don't know they're disliked, so we can make more ad revenue. And I guess that's good for me as a creator, uh, but honestly, I'd rather them just keep the dislike button. Um, people that probably get a lot of dislikes are happy right now, but, you know, uh, I mean, it, it, I wish they just didn't do that. But what, what, what can we do? I mean, there's nothing we could do. So hit the like button, do all that good stuff. Check out my Patreon down below. Make sure to also get your 50 free bucks from M1 Finance and check out my video from earlier. I'll pop it up here. I'll see you guys there. Thanks for watching. As always, keep crushing the markets. Stay safe out there. Peace out.